this is our first unit. It's going to cover the first two unit, uh, chap, I guess units. It's 1.0 through the 1.3. This is going to be the first half, and then I'll go ahead and introduce the second half next week. This is going to be going over self-awareness. First of all, to discuss the culture of the campus. Of course, we're going to discuss the culture of our campus, which is San Bernardino Valley. Here's a beautiful picture of San Bernardino Valley at night to your left. It's actually a gorgeous campus at night. I really love how they um, done so many updates, floor, lighting, it's really lit up. I feel super safe at that campus at night. Really pretty. Just wanna go over some little uh, key details about what you need to know about the college itself coming in from um, a, a high school or never being on a college campus before and what we expect you as a student to uphold. Of course, values and honesty and academic integrity. That really covers a lot of what you're going to be going over throughout the next two years you're here uh, if you come full time. Basically, we want you to be academically honest. So using your own work, you know, um, we want you to be successful in that, but we also want you to uphold your own values to that. Arrive on time and prepare, be prepared for classes. Um, some schools, they, I know universities, they don't even know if you're there or not. They won't, they're so big, these these schools, they have like 200 students in the class. It will be difficult to go through every single person who's there. They just basically give you the information, that's it. Unfortunately, because it's community college, it's a little bit smaller. You might have a, a instructor who takes note on who's there every day. So just be mindful of that. So you want you definitely want to be prepared to come on time. What does that mean? That means first day of school, parking is difficult. You're going to be looking for parking probably, I remember looking for about a half an hour or so, and then, you know, finally just deciding I'm going to park really far away and then I'll walk. Um, that's just one thing you just want to be mindful of is your time and being on time. So if you're at that eight o'clock Monday morning class, make sure you're, you find a, a parking spot on time. Or if you're taking the bus, make sure that the bus, you take the route and get there on time. So be mindful of that. Your meetings, activity, um, academic activities, there's so many extra things you can get involved with, uh, special events. We have so many on campus. Uh, just uh, be mindful of, of when those things are. It's so many uh, good resources for you as a community college student. Give attention to quality time and excellence in completing your assignments. Of course, they're going to say that since you were younger, right? Put your effort into it, but actually in, high, in college, you really do want to do this. Because what you're doing now or understanding now, a lot of it kind of will go towards your major. For example, if I'm majoring in psychology, my first intro to psychology class, I definitely learned about Freud and learned about all the information that later on, I'm like, oh, Eric Erickson, he's definitely something I remember. He's basically somebody who we talked about years later in my graduate program. So I wanted to be noteful that, you know what? I'm glad I paid attention during that assignment during that time because I, I'm really well aware of that information now. Also, as an instructor myself, I also see the difference in students completing and giving their efforts. I can have student A give me a whole detailed paragraph and I'm like, yes, that's everything I needed. Boom, hit all the, all the, the areas I needed. And then here's student B. This is what I understood. This is how I did it. And it was just a very three sentences maybe and thinking that they covered everything that I asked for, which in, in reality they didn't. They weren't really detailed. They didn't give much effort. And I can see that. So just be mindful and be give you, to me, I would say give your all. Doesn't mean you have to get A's in classes. It just means that you want to give an A for effort. You really want to do your best in trying because an instructor does take note of it. A lot of sufficient sufficient time to fulfill responsibilities outside of class. See, the thing with the environment and the new culture that you adapt, you're going to adapt for this new um, college life is going to see that I have more responsibilities now. I'm an adult, I'm older, I'm, 
I'm actually helping out. I have to take my sister to, to school or her errands or I have to do this for my mom and I, I'm actually I'm going to start getting a part-time job. So these are things that are outside of responsibilities aside from now going to college. So this is things that you want to give enough time that you can do all this stuff and include it in your life and not be overwhelmed in doing it. You want to observe etiquette and all communications, giving respect to instructors, fellow students, staff, and larger, larger college community. This just basically means being on the campus, we're all being respectful to one another, uh, we're abiding by etiquette. There's a certain way that you would email me, um, you would send me questions. It's not like, hey, what's up? You know, I'm not your friend, <laughs> I am your instructor, so there is a professionalism going on within this environment. How you speak to your instructors, how you um, uh, communicate with your peers, it's all, um, it's all part of etiquette. Take full advantage, of, just like I said, I stated earlier, is the college resources available to you. Uh, EOPS, TRIO, Veterans, DPS, these are some things I'm gonna go over, counseling. Um, so EOPS, I was an EOPS student myself. I really love EOPS program. It's Extended Opportunity Programs and Services. I was a first generation college student. I had no idea what I was doing with my life in college. I just basically knew that I wanted to go to school. Um, and this is after I, I came back and in, into school the second time. So when I came back to school and I was part of the EOPS program, I actually had a counselor I had to meet with every semester. And the counselor went over my plan, how my classes are going. So to have that little nudge of somebody behind you, it definitely helps out a lot. It also gave me priority registration. So that means I got every class I needed every time I registered. So it wasn't uh, oh, fighting with people to get the classes. I know I got the classes because I was part of that EOPS program. They help with my um, textbook supplies. I got backpacks. I got calculators. I got a calculator for my statistics class. I got um, pens, pencils, erasers. So things like that that they actually helped me out to supply for me because I was a low-income first-generation college student. And so it gave me an, the equity I needed to be successful in, in college. Also, I was also part of TRIO. So the TRIO program is very similar it bridges you basically it takes you on to go on to a um, higher education so uc cal state so the trio program also works very similar we have veterans for those of you who are veterans they work really well they know your chat charters your chapters they're really knowledgeable of um of all that for you one i really like to um introduce and talk about is dsps uh, disability programs and services this is the resource that is there for you, right? I had an IEP in high school, for example. I needed extra time on my test. I needed someone to assist me with note taking and whatnot. The way I developed this course in particular is I give extra time and time and a half so that I don't have to pick out and choose for my students who are our, who are DPS students so that I give it across the board. So if I give you a, a quiz and it's only like 10 questions and it should be like maybe 20 minutes or 25 minutes, I will probably give you longer, a time and a half for that to complete that because I do need to include that my students who do need that extra time and a half, I'm going to give that to them. And I also give it to my students who don't need it but can use that time if they'd like to. So I like to tell you that I do give you that during my, my online classes for you. The next thing I'll go over is uh, respect, diversity, and people, ideas, and opinions. This is kind of difficult um, because sometimes we've come from a certain culture and who we live with in our neighborhood is maybe very similar to our culture. And we sometimes we don't have that diversity. But I know as a San Bernardino Valley College a counselor, I can tell you we have a very diverse campus, which is awesome we have students from all walks of the world and this is a great a, something great that we do have although we still have to be mindful that other people other religions other political um, beliefs other you still have to respect their ideas maybe we don't agree we could agree to disagree but we don't want to force upon 
are my opinions and ideas and say this is the right way and yours is the wrong way. We just have to be really respectful when it comes down to that stuff, especially right now, especially oh, um, when things get a little bit closer to election time or um, when things occur in in the the media. We just want to be really mindful and respectful for our fellow our fellow peers. Achieving educational goals and in an organized, committed, and proactive manner. This is what we're here for. We came to college because, I mean, A, either I'm confused, I'm not sure what I want to do, or, and maybe I'll, I'll figure it out while I'm in college. Definitely, you can definitely do that. Or I came in knowing I for sure, let's say I want to be a needle, na needle, needle nail nurse, can't say it, and this is my goal, and I, that's how I'm going to get there. Great, awesome, we can also get you there. My goal is to get you to your goals as a counselor. And so counseling department is that's what we're there for. We have a whole map, a whole pathway laid out for you. Just tell us what you have in mind, what you want to do. It's our job to do the research for you. It's our job to see what classes you need. It's our job to basically assist you along the way so that you can get to your goal and you get there in a timely manner because we don't want you here seven years later and still confused. No, definitely not. So that's why we have you take, for example, Student 102, Student Development 102, and Student Development 103. This helps you to be a, a strong fundamental student and also helps with career paths as well. So we really want to make sure that it's all done in a proactive manner. Of course, take full responsibility of your own personal behavior. That's that's without going uh, going without said. And then comply if you can't see it, but it just basically says comply with all college policies. And that can be found in the student handbook, also the AKA uh, college um, catalog. Let's talk about the difference between high school and college. I do outreaches to high school and sometimes I tell my students the secret. So don't tell nobody, but Basically, when I was in high school, I don't remember doing the work in high school. And if you're like, oh, yeah, I remember doing my work. I don't understand what you're saying. No, 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 no. When you get to college, you're going to see that the work you did in high school is different from the work you're going to do in college. See, me going into college thinking that, oh, I could definitely pass all my classes like I did. I mean, I got my high school diploma and I did pretty fine. You know, I'm going to do the same thing that I did in, in college. So when I started my first semester in college, I did okay. I actually fa failed the class. And one, because I wasn't prepared. I wasn't noteful of the date, the times that I had to withdraw from the class. I just automatically assumed my teacher was going to do it for me. And no, I was supposed to do it myself. So I was supposed to take myself out of the class. And because I didn't, I failed that class. The next semester, I did the same thing, but actually took the class the whole way through but I didn't do so well. I didn't want to really write all those assignments. because I was thinking if I do like every other assignment, if I did okay in the, the tests, I would definitely pass the class. Yeah, no, I got a D in my anthropology class. I still remember the class because I didn't do so well in it. And then I got hit with a letter says saying that I'm on academic probation. Uh Oh, what's this about? Basically, they were saying that, hey, be mindful. If you continue to do what you're doing, we're going to dismiss you from our college. And that's exactly what had happened. The next semester, I thought I was going to do really well again, and I started working a little bit more hours and not giving much dedication to my education. Oh, I, I rhymed. So what happened is I, yeah, I failed again. I got a letter saying, please basically take the time off and you're dismissed, take the term, and then I would have to go through a, um, you know, remediation to come back into the school. Well, I, that's it, I gave up. And I didn't come back to school until about, I wanna say seven years later, you know, but it took me to get dismissed to realize that I actually had to dedicate myself to college. So here's a brief description on what it's like transitioning from high school to college and the difference. The transition from high school to college. Most of us share the experience of donning cap and gown to cross the stage during high school graduation to receive a diploma. Moving the tassel from one side of the mortarboard to the other brings with it the feelings of accomplishment, satisfaction, and excitement that marks the transition from high school to college life. 
However, according to the American College Testing Program, this transition is anything but smooth for many freshmen. Often, entering students think that college will be similar to high school or are overly confident in their ability to be successful in this new environment. This assumption and the expectations that come along with it are commonly referred to as the freshman myth and can be devastating to students if not corrected early in their college career. Indeed, poor academic performance is often linked to being underprepared for college life and first-year students' unrealistic expectations. So let's deal with these issues head-on, so to speak, and get you on the path to college success. The first thing to realize is that college is very different from high school. For example, high school is mandatory and often free, while college is voluntary and relatively expensive. Your time is structured by others in high school, while you are responsible for managing your time in college. In high school, you rely on parents and teachers to remind you of your responsibilities. In college, you are responsible for setting your priorities and meeting your responsibilities. In high school, your classes are arranged for you. You move from one class to another and often spend six hours a day or 30 hours a week in class. In college, you arrange your own schedule. You may have hours between classes and you may only spend 12 to 15 hours each week in class. In high school, you do most of your studying in class, while in college, you do most of your studying outside of class. Finally, in high school, you are not responsible for knowing what it takes to graduate, while in college, you are expected to take responsibility for your own graduation plan. If you do not learn what classes you need to take to graduate, you may face the potentially negative consequences of that decision. Now you may be thinking that these differences are overwhelming. How are you going to transition from high school to the very different environment of college? This video will give you a few tips to help you beat the freshman myth and to excel. First, the most important point to remember is the following. Self-motivation is key to college success. This can't be stressed enough. Each of the differences above can be overcome if a student is self-motivated. For example, remember when you were in high school? Many of you spent years becoming an expert at navigating that environment. You probably remembered to be at school on time, followed the class schedule given to you, listened to your teachers and parents' instructions, and paid attention in class, most of the time at least. When you had a problem to solve, such as finding out how to take the SATs or calculating how fast that train is really traveling, teachers, counselors, parents, and others were right by your side, helping you find the answer. In college, it's natural to think that these same behaviors will also be key to success. If you show up and follow instructions, then you'll do well. However, in the college environment, this is only half of what you need to succeed. A college student has to also be self-motivated, both inside and outside of the classroom. First, you not only have to follow a schedule, but also have to take charge of creating a schedule that sets you up for success. This means that you need to know the requirements for graduation and choose classes that fulfill these requirements. It also means that you need to choose classes that work with your sleep patterns and other responsibilities. For instance, if you're not a morning person or work late, try to take afternoon classes. If you know that you're taking time-consuming courses, try to balance those with less time-consuming ones, etc. Second, you have to motivate yourself to go to class and be an active participant. This may sound simple, but it's very important. You are most likely not living at home and a parent is not going to be there to make sure that you're going to class. Also, professors often don't require attendance. However, showing up every day will help you become familiar with the material and learn what the professor deems to be important. 
In addition, taking active notes will help you study for tests and other assessments. Remember that in college, most of your study time happens outside of the classroom. Going to class and taking active notes will help you identify what you need to study and give you the materials you need to be successful. Third, as just mentioned, you have to be motivated to study. Unlike in high school, many college professors do not check homework, such as reading or doing practice problems, but they do assume that you're doing the work. Make sure to do all your reading assignments before class so that you can get the most out of the experience. Also, do all the practice assignments and take full advantage of any extra materials that you're given. Unlike high school, participation points are just a small percentage of your grade. Often the bulk of your grade could be determined by one or two tests or writing assignments. Failing one, then, could mean failing the course. So take studying seriously and plan on spending a lot of time outside the classroom preparing for class. Finally, be motivated to get the help you need. In college, you will be faced with many new types of problems. Even though you are in a new environment, there are people who can help with just about any problem. However, it's important to take the initiative and find the resources or professional that can help you. For example, if you're struggling in class, ask your professor or teaching assistant for help immediately. Each professor has office hours and has set time aside to help students. If you're still struggling, then you could use resources to find a tutor or university writing center. If you're struggling with financial aid or registration problems, there are offices that can help you. You simply need to be motivated to find the help you need. Being self-motivated, both inside and outside the classroom then, will help you get on the path to college success. They'll help you diffuse the freshman myth so that you can once again have the experience of donning cap and gown to cross the stage to receive a diploma. Only this time, it will be your college degree and moving the tassel from one side of the mortarboard to the other will mark the transition from college to professional life. So that was a brief description on how the difference between the two are. I hope you took note because it all of it is very true. Take an online course now, and this is something I talk about this week, it's I talk about the myths, and I really want you to go over that because some of us are skeptic and a lot of us are taking online now. Because of what's going on, we are not on campus. But just be noteful that the miss is very true. I took an online class and just like I said, um, didn't do so well. So you want to make sure that you are dedicated and you perform and you do the work that's required. Because I want to say as long as the work is complete, most likely you'll be uh, successful in the class. Some helpful hints I can give you is getting on at least three times a week. So, you know, logging onto Canvas, seeing uh, maybe on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I get on for my two classes for uh, student development and my English class. And I just basically check, do I have any discussions I have to do? Do I have any posts due Thursday? Do I have any activities to do? So those are the days that I go to those two the, those two classes. And then my other two classes, let's say my math class and um, an art class, whatnot, then those are the other days that I will, will log on for those classes. Of course, it's all going to be subject to your time frame, but definitely want to continue to, to reach on and to see what you need to ac accomplish and complete for that week. Usually Sundays, like my own class, a lot of things are going to be due. So hopefully you're not at Sunday at 11.59 trying to submit all your work. And that's why I tried to tell you log in on Mondays and then maybe a Wednesday and a Friday. And then whatever you didn't post or maybe your last post, you can go ahead and come in on a Sunday. But hopefully by Friday, that way you have your weekend to do whatever, you know, you already had taken care of majority of your classwork. The last portion I'll be talking about is positive self-talk. 
This is basically going over if you're a positive or a negative thinker. This is in your the last um, unit we're going to discuss, so 1.3. I'd like for you to also, you're going to review all of this information. Some of the information I did not go over, like the non-traditional students and traditional students, that's going to be for your obligation to read the chapter, and that's going to be for you to review over. So your responsibility. This is There is also a quiz, and the link is on the next uh the next uh, slide. It's not a graded quiz, it's just basically you want to see where you're at with a positive or negative thinker. I do like this uh, quote from Gandhi. It's a, a man is, and let's say a person, a person is but the product of his thought, of their thoughts, what they think that they become. So I, I don't like to say he because it's so dominant, right? And right now we're just, it's all about empowering everyone. Right? We don't want to just empower the he, the man, because there is woman who is in there and becoming what your thoughts are. So be mindful of your thought process and your thoughts. So are you a positive or negative thinker? If you did want to take the quiz at the bottom, it's also um, on one of your uh, pages throughout the first unit. And you can go ahead and see where if you're a negative or a positive thinker. Here's what I tell my students. They come in to see me and they are going through maybe a little bit of a distress or whatnot. Sometimes it's because of our thought process. And I always, before I go to bed, I always think at least three positive thoughts right before I get to go to bed because it helps out for some reason. I don't know if it's my sleep or my thoughts before I, so I don't stay up at night thinking about, oh, what bills do I have to pay? No, it's, let's talk about, let's think about something positive. So positive affirmations are something that I would say, for example, I have a good um, connection with my students. I am a good employee or a good counselor. I am a motivational person. I love to make people laugh. These are positive uh, words of positive affirmation. So you want to say these things to yourself, at least three things, for example. Here's a couple sticky notes that give you an example of it. And I'd like for you guys to write these maybe on a wall, a small wall somewhere, maybe on a, a folder you use constantly. You could put it on your mirror that you look at, you put your makeup on it, um, you just, you know, you're in front of every morning. Put a couple sticky notes and then write some of these for example, I am in control of my success. I am worthy of wonderful things in my life because we all are worthy. And just like I said before, I if I can do it, you can do it. And success is in you and everyone for you. So that will conclude this lecture for uh, our first unit. And now continue on with the 1.4.